Welcome to Highlands Presbyterian Church. We hope you enjoy listening to the message for today. We are going back to basics as our theme for the year. Each week we will add another brick as we build on the layers. Receive your teaching. We give thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Luis. <coughs> Uh, good morning, friends. Uh, how are you? I think I'm good. Um, today is Pentecost Sunday, and it's been 50 days after Jesus Christ was resurrected. 50, 5 0. Um, the name Pentecost comes from the word 50. 50. Um, seven weeks. Um, it was the feast of weeks that they usually celebrated on, on this day. So, 40 days after Jesus Christ was resurrected, there was um, ascension. At Ascension, the disciples were, were told to wait in Jerusalem, not to leave Jerusalem until they receive. So they waited for 10 days. I don't know if they really knew what they were waiting for, but they waited for 10 days and on the 10th day I think maybe it was at the third hour around this time around 9 a.m. they were praising the Lord worshiping the Lord and something extraordinary like take a look at the beautiful design here today something extraordinary happened a wind made this scary sound. And as this wind was blowing, fire with tongues appeared. And they asked each other, what is this? When they were still asking each other, what is this? something funny began to happen. They began to open mouth. They began to speak in different tongues. I know many people, they love the word glossalalia. They began to speak in foreign languages. And people were like, are these men not Galileans? How come they speak foreign languages? We heard how many languages that they spoke. It was weird for us to go down to the Tonga land and find ourselves speaking the Tonga language. It was so funny. But they spoke as the spirit enabled them. However, brothers and sisters, I will not dwell much on glossalalia, what it means and what it is, because my theme for today is not Pentecost. My theme for today is God with us. When they saw Jesus Christ ascending to heaven, they felt the absence of God just like the dry bones in the valley. When they felt the absence of God, angels stood amongst them and they said, the one that you see ascending, you are going to see him in the same manner when he descends to take his only ones. So on this theme, God with us. I'm going to share with you 
from three points. Three points. First point is, I have a story to tell. The second point is, I will wait. The third point is, God with us. I have a story to tell. We read from the book of Ezekiel. That is my story. My story is based on one lady story, a lady called Nogutula Dube. Nogutula Dube is a survivor of the liberation struggle and Kukura Hundi. Noctula comes from a village called Sipepa, down in Cholocho. She has this to say. On the 3rd of February, 1983, our parents, our fathers were big, busy digging the trenches of the Blair toilets at our school. Our mothers were busy mending the floors of the classrooms that had been destroyed. For then, we had promised that finally, after eight years of waiting, schools will open. She says, 1975, war came to Cholocho. They were stopped from going to school. Then she was only six years old. She was supposed to be going to school in that year, but they were told, no more school. So she had to wait from 1978 to 1983, hoping to go to school. And in that year, when they were busy, everyone is happy, the war is over. Seven men walked in, walked into their school, they were wearing these farmers' hats, khaki shirts, and blue jeans carrying their guns. They grouped everyone and they said, before I go further, don't misconstrue this for politics. It's not politics, it's just a story. And they said to us, where are the dissidents? And everyone had never heard of the word, who are the dissidents? What are dissidents? They all said, we do not know who dissidents are. So they took our fathers to the other side of the ground and our mothers to the other side of the ground. And they stood in the mix carrying a 20 liter bottle. And they said, if you don't tell us where the dissidents went, we are going to fill this gallon with your blood. And they said, we do not know who the dissidents are, what dissidents are. But these guys were adamant. Three of them walked to men, two of them walked to women. And they told the men to start singing in this foreign language that they didn't know. Failure to sing this song, they will be killed. So our fathers, because they are Ndebele men, they are so proud, they said, we cannot sing this song. They took one man, they shot him, and they threw him into the cistern where they were digging. And they say, sing. And they thought they were joking. They took another man, they shot him in the presence of the whole school. We started screaming, yo, 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 But whilst we were screaming, it's as if our screaming didn't matter to them. They continued to shoot until about 40 men yet remained. Whenever they were told to sing, they would, they would just mimic the words of the song. If you try to mimic it, at least they will spare you. But later on, around 3 p.m., they began to shoot those men. They shot them, and they shot them, and they shot them whilst we were looking. And my father, Mr. Tube, 
was one of the last men. He said to them, kill me, for you have killed all my, my friends. And they said to him, we will not shoot you. We will call your wife to come and kill you. So they called my mother. And they gave her my father's digger. And they said, you saw what he said. He said he doesn't want to, 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 to die as a coward. So dig your mind to death. My mother took the digger. At first she refused. My, my father knelt down and looked at my, in my mother's face and said, hit me here. She said, Babaka Noktula, I cannot do this to you. I said, I have a story too, to tell. In the valley of the dry bones, in the valley of the dry bones, they all have a story to tell. The reason why it is a valley of dry bones it is because of these stories. So the mother took the digger and everyone looked it down. And that was the end of my father. And they looked around and they said, look at her. She has killed her own husband. As if it was not enough, they took all women, over 68 women, they were taken to this round hut that was just behind the headmaster's house. They put them in that house. They locked it. They set it ablaze. We could hear the voices of our mothers crying. Save us. Save us. But there was no one to save them. The echoes to today are still vivid. As if I could hear my mother Whilst all those women were shouting, I could hear the voice of my mother saying, why me? What about my children? So Noctula tells this story, brothers and sisters. She comes from gossip paper. I personally have seen the valley of dry bones. When you go to that community and you call for a meeting, no one comes out because the past stories are still vivid. But the Lord comes and says to Ezekiel, can these bones come to life? Can these bones come to life? And Ezekiel says, only you, Lord, knows. Only you, know, Lord, can save these bones. In the valley of the dry bones, it can be likened also to the disciples who waited for 10 days, not knowing what they were waiting for in the valley of the dry bones. It was a taboo for a priest to come in contact with the dead, for it he was considered unclean. But the Lord took Ezekiel, a priest, into a valley of dry bones to come in contact with death, to feel what it means to be dead, to feel what it means to be defiled 
And yet the Lord in the valley, he said, can these bones come to life? Ah, Lord, only you know. I know you sitting in the pews. You are also saying to God, now God, what then? And the Lord says to the disciples when they were in Jerusalem, wait until the promised spirit comes. My second point, I will wait. No two lies is to say, I had to leave. The memories had to be real, but I still had to leave. I still had to go to school. I still had to grow up. My heart was so bitter. My heart was so painful. Every day I would cry, but there was no one who was to say, Papa, I am sorry. So I had to leave. So I had to wait for God's vindication. I had to wait for God's justice. For God is just. The justice of God never came, brothers and sisters. The justice of God never came to me. I have no birth certificate. I have no ID, but I still had to go to school. I still had to overcome my fears, face those who spoke this language that I heard for the first time in 1983. I had to face them. I have to speak their language, for this is their language. But this is what God has to say, had to say to me. Fetch me a master seed from a home that has never known sorrow. Then we will use it to drive the sorrow out of your life. Fetch me that mustard seed. As they waited, they had so many questions. As they waited, they didn't know what they were waiting for. As they were waiting for the judgment, they did not know what the judge is going to do. As they waited for the Lord to answer, they did not know that the advocate, when he comes, he will reveal the truth. When he comes, he is going to comfort us. The paraclete, when he comes, he is going to educate us on how to live, on how to overcome, on how to share our pain, on how to share our hatred, on how to share our bitterness, on how to share the memories that cannot get out of our minds. The voices of those who are long gone and they still linger in our minds. When the Spirit comes, He is going to teach you. That's what Christ says to His disciples. So when they were in the valley and when they were in the upper room, as they were praying, the Spirit came. And when the Spirit came, brothers and sisters, I suppose they were waiting for the right answer. Go and kill. You know us. We are known for blood thirstiness. When they talk in history about the Ndebele tribe, they talk of the men who are blood thirsty. They thought, even amongst disciples, there was the sons of thunder. One of them even cut another soldier's ear when they were in the garden of Gethsemane. I suppose they were waiting that when the spirit comes, he's going to say, carry the axes, carry the clubs, carry the guns, go and kill them. But the spirit, when it came, they began to speak in tongues. They began to speak in foreign language. Noctula has this to say again. Now, I am all grown up. Now I am a woman. I had to get married. The funny thing is, I married the man who spoke that language. 
man from Zaka who didn't even know and my brothers, when they saw him, they said to me, what is it that you have done? What is it that you have done to us? You have betrayed us. What is this? We will not take his money. We will not take his money. We don't want to see him. If you marry him, you are no longer part of us. But from that time onwards, the love that I have experienced from this man, I never thought I would experience it from any other man. My mother's memories, my father's memories are still vivid. I know them. I thought the Lord is going to vindicate them the way I thought he will. But when the spirit came, I found myself wizarding, speaking their language. I have their children at home. They speak their language. My brothers hate me. When the spirit came on Pentecost Sunday, they spoke in foreign languages. Jews from over the world, converts of Judaism from all over the world, they heard him speak. They heard them speak in their languages. And they said, are these not Syrians? Are these not Parthians? Are these not Mets? How come we can hear them speak in our language? Brothers and sisters, when you receive the Spirit, May the Spirit enable you to speak the language of life. When the Spirit comes upon you, may the Spirit enable you to go beyond your own circle. When the Spirit comes on you, brothers and sisters, you have to be reminded of one thing. The Spirit, the new Mahakion, is going to comfort us in our sorrows. This new Mahakion, when he comes upon us, he is going to empower us because we ought not know what to pray for. But when he comes, he will intercede on our behalf with deep sighs and groanings. Oh, brothers and sisters, when the Spirit comes, he has to enable us to realize now there is no Jew, there is no Gentile, there is no circumcised, there is no uncircumcised, but there is only one people, the people who are called the children of God. I am no longer a slave of fear, for I am a child of God. I am no longer a slave of fear, for I have been redeemed by his blood, and I have received his spirit, the spirit that came on me when I heard coming, it came like the wrecking sound of the bones, and it came to me like the mighty rushing wind, and I can stand knowing that I am a child of God because the spirit is in me. Nothing can stop me because the Lord is alive. God is with us. From 1983, up to today, I have seen how the Lord has carried me. What are you going through, my brother? What are you going through, my sister? God is with us. If God was with this woman through all that she had to experience, what about you? God is with us. God is with us. Brothers and sisters, is there anyone who felt lost, who felt the Spirit has departed from their lives? If you are there, come, carry this brick that reminds you that God is with us. Come. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. 
Oh my day, I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. I have seen of the goodness of God. My brother, God is with you. Whatever you go through in life, He is with you. Remember that. Amen. You can lay the foundation. Thank you. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so So, brothers and sisters, we are also invited to this table. Not because we are worthy, but because he is with us. He invites us and he says, come to me and I will give you rest. So today, brothers and sisters, we share from the same loaf and from the same cup, knowing that he who died will live with us forever. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for inviting us to your holy table. Thank you for reminding us that the Pentecost experience was meant to show us that you are with us you will be with us forever. Amen. On the night Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took the bread, he broke it, and he said, this is my body given for you. Take and eat. On that very night again, when they had eaten, he took the cup. He blessed it. And he said, this is a cup of a new covenant which is in my blood. Whenever you eat, whenever you drink, do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Because we eat and we drink of this cup on a daily basis, let us set apart the bread and the wine so that they become the body and the blood of Jesus Christ that joins us together. Let us pray. Lord, bless this cup. Bless this wine. So that when we eat, we are healed. When we eat, we are strengthened. When we eat and drink, Lord, we do not do it for our own fulfillment, but do it in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for listening. Your tithe or offering is greatly appreciated. Please see the bank details attached.